Occupy the Castro is starting in five minutes, designed to highlight the evictions that tenants may suffer as part of the bank foreclosing under the Ellis Act here in San Francisco. Uh, the first time we actually had an Occupy here in my neighborhood. A lovely and somewhat quiet Saturday afternoon here in the Castro. that are happening in this city and it's great and maybe Gabriel can talk a little about it so there's a mass transfer of wealth happening in the African American community over 50% of the Bayview is in uh, will be in foreclosure by the uh, end of next year the, the, the immensity of what the banks have done is I, I think lost on most of us when 11 foreclosures in one block, a 75-year-old grandmother, a woman who'd lived in her home for 40 years, whose father had built that home, was on workers' compensation. A person knocked on her door. She was low on money because she was on workers' comp. She had a job. They, they gave her one of these predatory loans. But it's not just her. And that's the thing. There's so much shame about people losing their homes right now. People are in foreclosure. And because there's shame around our finances, they don't get that this is a systemic problem. This is capitalism at its finest. Predatory loans, people knocking on their doors, they're losing their homes in immense numbers. This problem is not just in the Castro. This problem isn't just in the Mission. It's not just in the Tenderloin. It's a citywide problem where working class, middle class people are losing their homes of 30 and 40 years. Seniors, people with AIDS, renters, homeowners, this is a crisis of epic proportion. So I, I ask all of you today uh, to think not just of, of one or two neighborhoods, but of our entire city, our entire country is facing a, an, an immense foreclosure crisis. So um, thank you. Of the action today is to bring the Occupy movement into the neighborhoods. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. To say to the city, that this is not just a uh, situation happening at Justin Herman Plaza. This is something that is happening all over this city. People are suffering all over the city, and we want it to stop now. No more evictions. No more evictions. No more foreclosures. No more foreclosures. So I just want to talk for a second about the reality of the Castro. We all know now the Castro now as this upscale neighborhood, but there was a time when the Castro was not upscale. There was a time 20 years ago when you could move into the Castro and get a flat for $800 a month. Yeah. And four people could pile into it and your rent would be $200 a month. Studios Imagine. Were Studios were 150. Um, it was a time when queer activism was booming, when every weekend there were rallies like this going on in Harvey Milk Plaza, when queer organizations had offices above the shops all along Castro Street, ACT UP, everybody, all along the street. There was always something, 18th and Castro was activist central. People would be there with bullhorns, with petitions, organizing people. What happened? What happened to our neighborhood? What happened was the dot-com boom. And what happened during the dot-com boom was that rents went from 800 a month to $3,000 a month, almost overnight. That's what killed the Castro as a place for people, people who weren't rich to live. And 
Suddenly, we saw a lot of homeless folks in the Castro. And it's no coincidence when, that when rents shoot up like that, when they triple overnight, that you're going to have homeless people on the streets. No coincidence. So the, the, the piece that people don't understand is the collusion of the banks in all this. We think of the banks in terms of foreclosures, but think about this. In the Castro, most of the evictions were being done through the Ellis Act, which is a state law. And what was happening was real estate speculators were getting financing from banks, like the ones in the Castro. And they were using that money to buy buildings, evict all the tenants under the Ellis Act, and then flip the building into TICs, tenancies in common sell them for lots of money and they walk away with anywhere from a half a million to 1.5 million dollars in profit and then turn around and do it to another building during the dot-com boom hundreds hundreds of people were evicted from the castro overnight and they were mostly people with aids who had lived in their apartments for years this is why we're here today because these banks are responsible for the eviction crisis that we have, we, have, we have had in the Castro, and we're here to hold them accountable, right? Yeah. We're here to serve them with eviction notices yeah. and tell them that we the people, we the 99% are evicting them. Because yeah. you know what? If they're going to try to evict us, we don't fucking want them in our neighborhood. Leave our neighborhood. Well, I'm here today to talk about housing and specifically around foreclosures. It's true, the LGBT community has been forced uh, out of the Castro in the last 30 years. There's been a systematic um, confiscation of different people's properties, and it's, you know, we don't have as much money as the straight community. So we're here gathered today to say no more bank foreclosures. Well, I'm hoping that more and more people get involved with the struggle. I think it's important for people to be involved with the Occupy movement in one way or another. The idea of 99%, that's really powerful. And um, we're talking about wealth and ownership. There's very, 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 very few people who are actually in that 1%. So the advent of talking around class issues, I think is possibly the most important part of what Occupy has given us, is we actually have a dialogue about class in our country for the first time in a long time. And we need to continue to focus in on that. How do we continue to talk about class issues in our own communities? another part of our platform. Do you agree? Yeah. 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 And what about dismantling corporate personhood? Yeah. Yeah. And dismantling gay incorporated? Yeah. Yeah. And guaranteeing affordable housing and health care for all? Yeah. And open public spaces to the full use of the experimentation and creative use of the people? Yeah. Yeah. Increasing the amount of public spaces so that our populations can grow and thrive. There should be equal amounts of public spaces as there is private property. Nonviolent social and economic reform through transient creative intervention. I love the fact that our brothers and sisters are occupying specific spaces, but we occupy every space we inhabit as we transit through time and space. It's our responsibility to take the attitude and platform of Occupy and share it with everyone we meet in each space we inhabit because the Occupy movement does not happen in one particular location. It happens equally throughout the whole system. I love being a part of the city. I've been here since 1977. I was in the Elephant Walk the night of the White Night Riots. I've seen this space when Carol Roberts would stand up here in the middle of the night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, 
to hundreds of people standing out here loving and celebrating one another. When I used to walk through these streets in 77, people would walk up and kiss one another on the street constantly. There were smiles and happiness. And we need to remember what took place within these sacred spaces. And we need to reactivate that same humanism and love that has permeated this corner for years and years and years. It's our responsibility to generate that love again because it's only through that power and the spirit of Gandhi, the spirit of Harvey Milk, that we will overcome this entrenched feudalism. They said we needed to get rid of communist Russia because they worked 10 hours a day, six days a week. There was no freedom of the press and they were constantly monitored. Well, what's the difference between communist Russia and what this has become? Yeah. We have become the shadow. Well, the Tea Party raises the red, white, and blue while hiding their own shadows of treason. <laughs> well, probably China's behind the Republican Party creating American dysfunction on purpose because they can't blow us away. We need to change this with love, and we need to change it within love within this community, starting here and rippling out. The beauty about the fact that we're transiting ourselves downtown to the Ferry Building and the larger part of our polis is that our smaller democracy here will take its message to the larger community and infiltrate those spaces with our love, our power, our magic, and our energy. No matter where you work or what you do, take this message today as a spirit that's coming from the dead that not only have it over there, the tribute to the people who the Nazis had killed, and don't forget that had that happened in a place that was once whose laws were changed and became fascist. And we know our laws are being changed today. So we cannot let that happen. I'm so glad you took time to listen to me. I've never done that before. Bye. <laughs> The wonderful district okay. of the Castro okay. to say no more foreclosures. We did not create this financial mess. So the main reason I wanted to come out and occupy the Castro instead of standing around at a subway stop is that one of the things that I have felt really annoyed by for the last few years is this whole myth around gentrification. Gentrification, as they teach us in college, is this phenomenon where gay men move into a neighborhood and they make it so expensive they kick everyone else out and they're bad. Except for secretly, that's not actually how gentrification works. Once upon a time, there was this big bad disease and all these people started dying from it. And at the same time, we were amassing a large amount of political power, specifically financial power in the Castro which is pretty amazing for an oppressed minority that still didn't have legislation protecting it from getting jobs. So as we started to die and all these apartments started to become available, a lot of people got together in banks and in governments and they realized we could break the queers if we could raise the rent by literally 9,000% in three years. That's right. Who's got an apartment in the Castro? I used to. Do you know how much it was? It was retarded. It was absolutely totally retarded. And guess what? It was kind of also a piece of shit. True. Totally. So here we are, and we have this neighborhood, and it's like the gay mecca or whatever, and people come here to experience gay liberation. But when I walk around, what I see is like 30% empty storefronts, and a whole bunch of ATMs, and a few bars, and a bunch of places you can buy crap pipes. <laughs> now what is up with that? Is that really the neighborhood that we want as our gay mecca? Are there all sorts of conspiracies going on in the business world to make it so that the only places that can afford to stay open on our actual street are what? Bars, places you can buy crack pipes, and ATMs. And empty storefronts. Lots of empty storefronts. Storefronts that cost $7,000 a month. How many shoes do you have to sell to get $7,000 a month in rent? Come on. I mean, this is really actually something that's going on right now in our neighborhood. But I hope that all of you are sitting around here wondering, like, what could I be doing today instead of sitting around the Castro enjoying amazingly beautiful weather on December 2nd? Well, secretly, you could be getting a tan as you walk down Market Street, telling the banks how much you don't like them, how much you wish all your friends had houses, and about how much you wish, like, all sorts of neat things are going on right now. And that's why it's an occupation. We're going to take this occupation down the street. But these people are already occupying. They are holding fear space. Look at them. They are totally owning that street like it's public property. And why? Because it is public property. Secretly.
needs and repairs. You have targeted low-income neighborhoods and minority groups. Evict the banks! 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 That's okay, we were just doing it for you anyway. Queers are the 99%. Queers are the 99%. Queers are the 99%. Queers are the 99%. Are the 99%. Are the 99 okay, fine. We're queer. I guess it's not a thing. We all have to keep walking. We're queer. We're queer. Police are blocking the entrance to the Wells Fargo here. Police are the 99%. The American economy. We occupy for change. For taxing Wall Street transactions. We occupy for change. For the breakup of big banks. Too big to fail is too big to exist. We occupy for change. For the protection of our people's homes and the hands of foreclosures. We are the change. For an end to money and politics. We are the change. For a world of forgiveness. We are the change. Look at all these protesters breaking the laws by jaywalking. It's so scary. Yeah. Oh, you know what I hear? We're walk down the street so if I walk, because that's funner. Yeah, woohoo! Look how much more fun this is, because technically, people who pay taxes are big streets. Which I think is great. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 I'm here with Occupy Yourself. Uh, there's a lot of change that we need in our society, and I am here to support all the efforts that we can to highlight the inequities that are happening in, in our America and in the world today. And so I'm here to support uh, the fact that people are being evicted from their houses or being foreclosed on.